In example one, we were counting the number of ace cards and the number of face cards. And in example two, we were again counting the number of spots on the die with the lower outcome and the number of spots on the die with the higher outcome. In this particular example, we won't be counting. And this will be our first example of a pair of continuous random variables. Jordan and Greta agree to meet at the library between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. Their arrival times are independent and uniformly distributed between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. If they wait 15 minutes for the other, find the probability that they meet. So this is a strange way of getting together, but this is what they've decided on, is each of them will independently show up between 2 and 3 p.m. and they're only willing to wait 15 minutes for the other person and then they leave. So one decision that you have to make up front is notice that this is 15 minutes and up here you have things in hours. So the units have to go one way or the other, either minutes or hours. And let's go with minutes. Once you decide you're going to go with minutes, we're going to let the random variable x be Jordan's arrival time measured in minutes after 2 o'clock. So that means we go from 0 to 60. Now also you have the random variable y and this will be Greta's arrival time in minutes after 2 o'clock. So it can also go from 0 to 60. Now as you might imagine, um, this uniform distribution is the same uniform distribution from the previous chapter. So it's the, the probability density function of Jordan's arrival time will just be 1 60th. And also the uh, probability density function for Greta's arrival time will also be 1 60th. So this will help lead us to finding the joint probability density function. We know already that the support will be x values between 0 and 60 and y values between 0 and 60. As a quick example, if x is equal to 45 and y is equal to 12, that is right there. And notice in this particular case, Jordan arrived at 245, Greta arrived at 212, and so in this particular case they arrived far enough apart that they didn't wind up um, meeting. Now because their arrival times are independent, this is using a result from the future, but we'll get to it eventually, you can multiply the PDF of Jordan's arrival time and the PDF of Greta's arrival time. So 1 60th times 1 60th is 1 hundredth, and that is the joint PDF. Notice that this square here is the support, so I will label it as script A. And furthermore, you can think of the joint PDF as kind of floating above this square at 1 hundredth, and that is the joint PDF. Notice if you take 60 times 60, you get 3600. And if you take 3600, which is the area of this square, and multiply it by 1 hundredth, you'll get 1. So the volume underneath the joint PDF over the support script A is 1, as it must be to satisfy the existence condition. Now the next thing we want to find is we want to find the probability that Jordan and Greta will meet, which is to say find the probability that the absolute value of x minus y is less than 15 minutes. Now in this particular case that probability could be found, well first of all let's identify it, um, x minus y in absolute value being less than 15, that is this shaded region right here. Notice if you're right on the diagonal, let's just make one up here, this is, that dot right there is Jordan showing up at 2.30 and Greta also showing up at 2.30. Obviously they meet in that case. But this shaded region 
corresponds to Jordan and Greta meeting, and that is absolute value of x minus y less than 15. The two white triangles here correspond to Jordan and Greta not meeting. So to find this probability, you will do the double integral over this shaded region. I'll go ahead and label it as a of f of xy. And we know f of xy is 1 3600th dy dx. Now that's a kind of a painful double integral to set up because it keeps the limits keep changing. If you look early on, run your strips uh, vertically here, you have 0 is your lower curve and this is your upper curve. But then when you get over into here, you have a different lower limit. And when you get way out over here, you'll notice that the upper limit changes. So rather than doing that, we'll have plenty of chances in the future to work double integrals. I'm going to go ahead and work this geometrically, which is to say I'm going to take this 1 3600th and I'm going to pull it outside of the integral. And now what is left is what I would like to do is figure out the area of this shaded region here. Well, an easier way of doing that is to take the area of the whole region, which we know is 60 times 60 or 3600, and subtract out the two white triangles. Well, there's two white triangles, and each one of them is 1 half base. And the base of that triangle is 45 minutes. And the height is also 45 minutes. So that's what you get. When you work out 3,600 minus 45 squared, you get 1,575 divided by 3,600. That turns out to be 7 sixteenths. And the decimal for that is 0.4375. So about 43, 44% of the time, Jordan and Greta will um, meet. And the remaining percentage of the time, they will not meet. Now, you might be nervous about this result because it's your first continuous example. And you may want to check this by Monte Carlo simulation. And that's what goes on the next page. So for the Monte Carlo simulation, we're going to do 100,000 replications. And x, in this case, will be Jordan's arrival time measured in minutes after 2 o'clock. And that is going to be 100,000 of his arrival times between 0 and 60 minutes. y here will be some independent uniforms, 100,000 of them. And those will be Greta's arrival time. And finally, the last thing we do is we add up the number of those where the absolute value of x minus y is less than 15, divide by 100,000. And when we run these four lines of our code five times, we get 0 0.43489, 0.43770, etc. Notice that these numbers are hovering about the analytic solution, which is 4.4375, some a little bit uh, higher and some a little bit lower. And from that, we can conclude that our Monte Carlo simulation supports the analytic solution.